I'd like to say a warm welcome to you. Uh, this is Majestic Christian TV Network. Um, my name is Apostle Larry Duncan, and uh, it's my delight to, to bring to you the word of the Lord on this Good Friday, Good Friday 2014. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you this hour. Thank you for this commemorative day when we remember the great, great, great sacrifice, the great, great, great event in history and in the spirit where Jesus took our place and gave us life. We thank you for such a great occasion that we can recall and we can remember and we can relieve this experience. Thank you so very much. Cause your word this hour to bless our hearers and our viewers that they would also experience the impact of that great sacrifice our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ made on the cross of Calvary. Be glorified and be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome once again. Well, like I said in the beginning, today is Good Friday and uh, so naturally we would like to hear something about, um, you know, about Jesus, about the cross and all that. Um, but when I woke up this morning, I felt my, my whole heart and my being, uh, I tried to tune in into the mood, the atmosphere sur surrounding the, this very season. And I think it's important that you also who is listening, you take a moment to savor this moment and to be appreciative to God for having given us such an occasion. Are you hearing me? So I'm speaking on what I title, the message I title, it was all settled at the cross. It was all settled at the cross. Now just to take your mind back a little bit, if you have been following uh, our messages on this channel from the beginning of this year, we've been talking about settlement, this year being a year of settlement. As a matter of fact, the settlement which um, we can look forward to entering or enjoying is something which came because of what happened on Good Friday. The day Jesus Christ went to the cross. Every other settlement is connected. It's based upon this one single or singular settlement. Now let me go into the scripture right now. And I'm taking my reading from Luke chapter 22. There is a, a verse that which actually, you know, kind of gets me as, uh, somewhat excited. I like that for some reason. I'm reading from the verse 14 of Luke chapter 22. It says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. I will not eat of it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So he was telling them that he was about to eat with them the last supper in fact um jesus had grown up as a, a jewish uh, child boy and to a full grown man so the tradition of eating the passover meal was not a new thing it had been happening every year every year they had been doing that you see but the one the one they had uh, he we, we just read about he was about to celebrate with his disciples was a very unique one. See, there are certain events in your life which mark a turning point. I prophesy to you that this very year will mark a turning point in your life. The issues which have been unsettled will find settlement because of the cross. Because Jesus did something on that cross. We settled every argument, 
we brought an end to every trouble and harassment. You will enter your settlement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So he told them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, the history of the Passover is, a, is very interesting because it details um, you know, what had been in the mind of God all this while. You know, until uh, it was physically and actually fulfilled by Jesus. It reinforces the concept of a sacrifice and the power that is in that concept and also the, the power behind the, uh, uh, a covenant. You see, so we see that God's, the principles of God the mind of God, the plan of God, the thoughts of God, all of these things keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And finally, they find fulfillment in the personality of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, the story of the Passover dates back to uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12, when the Israelites were in Egypt. And um, they had been there for over 400 years, and it was time for them to be released. God wanted to release them from the grip of Pharaoh. God sent Moses to Pharaoh to ask for their release, and, and uh, Pharaoh refused to let them go. And God began to bombard Pharaoh and Egypt with plagues upon plagues upon plagues. And with all of that, they hardened their heart and never wanted to let Israel go. And then there was one more, um, one more plague which struck Egypt so hard that Egypt had no choice but to let Israel go. One more plague settled everything. Jesus said, I have desire to eat this Passover with you because I will not eat of it anymore until it finds fulfillment, until it finds accomplishment in the kingdom of God. Now, that is to say there is coming a kingdom. There is coming a government in which uh, God will be central. Jesus said, in that kingdom, I will eat the Passover meal with you again. Hallelujah. Now, what is interesting is that this uh, uh, Passover, uh, like I said, began uh, in the time of Moses when, um, when, when God decided to deliver the Israelites from the grip of, of, of Pharaoh. Now, what is remarkable about this is that this particular Passover carried a lot of weight. It carried a lot of meaning in the sense that it made Jesus determined to go the direction he wanted to go in order to finalize certain things for the sake of humanity, for the sake of you and I. Now, when Jesus went to that cross, and endured the shame of it and endured all, all the embarrassment and the pain and agony. He knew that something great was going to come out of it. Hallelujah. And so that's why he, he looked forward to it. In spite of the painfulness of it, in, part, in spite of the harshness of it, he looked forward to it. I wanted to know that in this very Passover, in this very uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ lies your own help, your own deliverance, your own settlement, your own freedom from every kind of trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that today you will find purpose, you will find accomplishment, you will find blessing because of the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I pray that this Last Supper, the Last Supper of Jesus, which eventually led him to the cross, will replicate itself in your life. The Bible says, if I may read a little bit of uh, what happened that evening, verse 17, he says, After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among us, among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And once again, the kingdom of God here is speaking of the authority and the administration under the, under the, under the governance or leadership of God himself. It will be ordered and run according to godly principles. Jesus is saying that he will not eat of the fruit of the vine until that day. Hallelujah. Then verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In fact, when I woke up this morning and I realized today was Good Friday, I... My, my, my heart and my mind began to go, uh, began to look, I began to remember when I was growing up as a, as, a, as a boy. And those days, we were very active in the Catholic Church. We were mass boys, you know. We were very involved because those days are very, very intense. From, in fact, we have uh, what is called the Ash Wednesday uh, and then... Uh, leading up to uh, the Good Friday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Holy Saturday, and then, uh, and then of course, Easter Sunday. Those are very busy periods where we go to church a lot and different activities which remind us of the, of the significance of the death of Christ. And I realized that, in, you know, in other denominations, in especially the Pentecostal Charismatic, uh, we don't have things like that, which, which helps people to think and to and to place themselves uh, in the uh, what shall I say uh, to help them to envisage clearly what it took for Christ to suffer. You know that sort of uh, service is not really visible, is not really uh, present in the um, Protestant denomination. Now in the Catholic Church those days. You know, they had what you call the stations of the cross, whereby you go through phases of the suffering and the torture and up to, leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So, once you begin to go through these things, and at every step, you stop, you pray, you kneel down, you do all kinds of things. You know, so all those things are done. And so, when you follow those things, you get a sense of what the Lord went through. It, it's very humbling. It's very touching. It, 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 it makes the soul become broken and contrite. And so, when I woke up, I remember some of those things. And I remember some of the songs we used to sing. Very touching movie songs. I said, oh, we haven't sung these kinds of songs in a, song in a, long, a long time. And if at this point in my life, I can remember those days. It means that those ministrations had an awesome effect on one's soul and on one's contrition. And so I began to appreciate and to thank God for who He is and for what He has done for me over the years, for the salvation which is brought to me through Jesus Christ. I don't know how you celebrate uh, your Good Friday. I don't know whether you ever have the time to reflect and to think about who Jesus is and, and what He went through for you. You see, now the Bible says in Exodus chapter 12 that God told the Israelites that they are to take a lamb and, and they are to kill the lamb and they are also to take bread, uh, 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 bread made without yeast and they are to eat this and that is to, to, to become for them a yearly event and they are to do this for generations to come to commemorate, to commemorate, to remember. The day he set them free from the captivity of Egypt. Hallelujah. They were to do this regularly. 
So which means that God intends for us to also remember what it took for him to break the power of Egypt over the life of his people. We are supposed to remember what it took God to break the power of sin over our lives. I was reading a story about a man. In fact, he became a very, very popular missionary uh, from Holland, a Dutch missionary. He's called Brother Andrew. And the story of this man is very moving. How growing up in a very, you know, ordinary family, you were not so rich and everything like that. They didn't have money and all that, but they were just an average family. But he wanted desperately to have adventure to go out. And eventually, he ended up in the army, and they sent him to Indonesia, and he, he was there for a couple of years. And one day, he got shot in the leg. The bullet went through his legs, went through his muscle, uh, his flesh, and came out. And that thing caused him to be discharged. And when he came back, it was then that the Lord began to deal with him. He never, before this time, wanted he never wanted anything to do, to do with god he never wanted but for some reason god began to deal with him and he began to find himself being drawn to the word of god so when he got this church came back he began to somehow began to attend meetings crusades here and there god began to draw him eventually he became a missionary but the point i wanted to make is that that man whilst he was in the military the kind of life he led was really terrible he drank so bad he used a lot of bad foul language and he was sleeping here and there with girls with women you know all those things which people would do when they are under the control of sin but one day just one day he went to a meeting and, and in the meeting he didn't know what happened to him he found himself uh, just saying yes, you know, responding to the altar call of the man of God and went forward and before he knew he gave his life to the Lord. And he didn't know what was happening to him, but his life just began to change. And he was looking at himself and wondering how could he respond and go forward to the altar to give his life to Christ. In other words, a superior power or force had come upon him and was making him obey God. The point I'm driving at is this. All by ourselves. All in our own might. We can never. We can never resist sin. We can never say no to evil. There is such a controlling and a compelling power. Of evil. That it takes only the power of God. To set us free. So that's how. That man was freed from the power of evil and to the glory of God he became a mighty missionary who began to smuggle Bibles to, you know, to the Eastern Bloc. Those days you, you couldn't do that. You know, he became God. If you, if you get a book or hear of the book called uh, titled God Smuggler, it's about that man. God's power is awesome. You see, when the forces of evil try to hold and suppress us, it takes nothing but the power of the cross to set us free. That night, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 12, that after they ate the Passover lamb and the unleavened bread, and they had sprinkled the blood on their doorposts and on their lintels, the Bible says that day, something happened their destiny changed from slaves from born men and born women they became free people hallelujah that is how powerful the cross can be so when jesus said i have desired with every desire to eat this passover with you he knew that they were at a, a watershed moment a, a point where something drastic was going to happen remember that all through his years his growing up years and through the years, you know, he became, before he, be, he got into ministry, they had been eating Passover, commemorating an event. But there was one day when that thing really took on meaning and actual significance. 
I prophesy to you that the Passover will take real and actual significance in your life this year in Jesus' name. I speak the power of the cross into your life that you will be delivered and set free from every kind of bondage, material bondage, spiritual bondage, mental bondage, emotional bondage, whatever kind of bondage has been upon your life, that in Jesus' name, that the power of the cross will break it and that you'll be set free. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Jesus knew the time had come for that change to happen. And so he was more than willing to go forward to face the cross and to give up his life. I want you to remember this, that Jesus made it possible for you and I. What are you going to make possible for, for God? Let us not be like people who always sit back and we want to enjoy and to receive what God has for us. And that's why, you know, sometimes when people take for granted the grace of God, they say, yes, uh, yes, after all, the grace of God is there. I can do it and I can make any mistake. I can do live anyhow I want. I'll be forgiven. The blood of Jesus will wash me. It's a mistaken notion and an abuse of the grace of God. You've heard me talk about this before. So, But just to let you know that those people do not have a very good and a clear understanding of of the cross and its meaning. They have never been taught and have never been made to at least have an imagination of what Jesus went through to secure their liberty. And that's why for people like that, the Bible says that when they have denied the cross, they will never be there, there will never be a second chance for them. They will never be forgiven. Hallelujah. And so let's be very, very careful about that. But I want you to know that it was all settled at the cross. It was all settled at the cross. Jesus settled it all. If you are looking forward to settlement this year, then I want to tell you that it is at the cross it happens. Hallelujah. The cross it's not only the physical wooden structure upon which Jesus was crucified. It means more than that. It means more than that. It means also you denying yourself and letting go of your selfish and wicked and carnal desires. And, and, and yielding to the will of God. Like Jesus yielded to the will of God. So when you yield to the will of God, you will find out that the things holding you will break their hold. The things oppressing you will break their hold. Every satanic activity will break its hold over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. Everything limiting you will break its hold. When you go to that cross like Jesus did. I want you to know that at the cross... There is settlement. At the cross, there is finality. At the cross, there is wholeness. Receive that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to close by reminding you that Jesus eagerly looked forward to that last meal. Because at that last meal, he fulfilled something. He let them know that that with they have all been eating and doing and enjoying over the years, symbolically, was actually going to take place. I pray that in any way you have been living your life and conducting yourself anyhow or, or taking for granted even the grace of God. I want you to know that it let this moment carry a different meaning, a higher meaning. A more real meaning to you as you celebrate this Good Friday, this season when we commemorate the blessed death, suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that you have been encouraged and challenged by these few words. May your Easter be blessed in every way. May you have a deeper and a closer walk with Jesus. Until we see you again next time on this very channel, 
Majestic Christian TV Network. God bless you. Bye-bye.